filthy fellas i'm sure some of you guys don't know anything about this but there's this uk podcast called filthy fellas that's going through some drama at the moment so this podcast of filthy fellas i have to be honest i've never watched a single full episode of their show but they do do their marketing and social media really well because I feel like I've watched it. You know the type of shows where you've not watched it, but you've watched it because you see clips on social. They do great. So it's basically like a panel discussion show. They usually have three people sitting on one side of the room, on each side of the room, sorry, and they talk about football. And it's called Filthy Fellas. Different, they've got like a main core group of people that do the show, but then they do have like some guests come in. They've had Rio Ferdinand in the past, other celebrities come in, blah, 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 blah. Well, one of the people in Filthy Fellas, this guy here called Tago Siegel, Tigo Siegel, sorry, this uh, this dude here, the fat dude here on the side, let me get it up for you so you can see it. This fat dude here with the bald head, he's been accused of stealing £70,000 to £200,000, allegedly. He's been accused of stealing from the Filthy Fellas bank account. So all these guys are friends. I think they've been friends, some of them, 10 plus years. They do a podcast where they sit down, talk about football, culture, music, relationships. You know, the standard, you know, young man podcast thing. They're all, it becomes really popular. It's one of the most popular podcasts here in the UK. People love their banter, love their vibe. And they start to make some money. They start to get some sponsors and shit. And allegedly this guy, who's one of the, main guys in terms of organizing and booking guests and just you know kind of being like admin -y type of dude he's still a personality on the show he's still a host on there but he acts more like a moderator sometimes sometimes like a host the main you know the white guy that doesn't mind doing all the the admin stuff he's the one that was allegedly accused of stealing between seventy thousand pounds to two hundred thousand pounds crazy isn't it so it all came to a head on social media um, first, there was a couple of posts I want to highlight here that kind of give you a breakdown of what happened. One of the hosts on the show called Poet made this really funny post, very rude, very blunt, but also very funny. When the news leaked that Tego had been sacked and fired and kicked out of Filthy Fellas because he didn't appear in a couple of episodes, he got on social media. Um, Poet is one of the hosts um, and founders, I guess, of the show and said the following, just to make it clear, Tego is not part of Filthy Fellas. Everyone enjoy your day. Change your bio. That is such a bitchy, sassy, you know, thing to say to somebody. But it's so funny. Change your bio. <laughs> Take that fucking Filthy Fellas out of your bio, right? So I love that shit. Cool. Another update here, courtesy of the UK Hip Hop account on Twitter, posts the following. So I've, I've heard from specifically as sorry to bait up your spot as but as is on spaces and as said according to the information that he got this tago guy stole seventy thousand pounds according to uk hip-hop the figure is two hundred thousand pounds now look at this bit of news information they found out he was stealing how they found out he was stealing because this guy steve bartlett who's almost like the I guess the Joe Rogan of the UK, he's got like a very popular podcast here. People love to watch it. He's got business people, comedians and shit. He actually had Tim Dillon on there recently. One of the best Tim Dillon interviews actually. And I watch a lot of Tim Dillon and he's probably usually not the best guest on other shows, but he had probably one of the better Tim Dillon interviews on there. Um, so definitely give him a check. He's got a good um, podcast. I've got the name of it actually, but if you type in Steve Bartlett on YouTube, I'm sure you'll find it. So allegedly this Steve Bartlett guy was trying to invest in Filthy Fellas in the legit business way i'm assuming so he probably wanted to get a hold of the books he wanted to go through the accounting and that's when they uncovered that this guy was stealing <laughs> isn't that fucking hilarious it would have gone under the radar no one would have noticed even though there's like 17 million people on the pod that's something they have to take us at l there's like 17 black guys on this podcast everyone is laughing and showing teeth and happy and jolly but nobody noticed the white man teething in the background because they're all busy fucking cheesing for the camera but when this guy came in to invest some money it was uncovered that you know he might have been putting his fingers in the fucking cookie jar and shit um so let me continue also by the way big up big up tago this is the this is the picture that he posted when he got fired as a statement thing he posted a picture of him holding up a canoe t-shirt um canoe obviously arsenal legend nigeria legend footballer 
but I love how this is almost like a is he trying to like is he trying to like pander because he got fired from this predominantly black podcast he's trying to say hey hey guys I, I, I'm still one of you guys I still like you guys I still got you know I got a canon shirt it's like what what was that what a weird thing to hold up anyway um this is Kurt to Hip Hop Daily I don't know how man could let him type that poetic shit and gloss over the reasons why he got fired was because he had been stealing from them black men from time. He was even negotiating a deal with Filthy Fellows with Steve Bartlett with mad splits. So allegedly, not only did the Steve Bartlett negotiations or buyout investment, whatever was happening, reveal that he was stealing. This guy is alleging that he was actually planning to steal more. He was trying to construct a deal that would be favorable to him. <laughs> <laughs> that maybe give you more beneficial splits honestly man the podcast industry the content industry is full of so many scammers in it it's legitimately copying and repeating the same mistakes of the music industry nothing has improved and it's worse too because a lot of these people are friends you know they're friendship groups that then decide to go on camera and they you know are lucky enough to become successful and grow and touch people and make loads of money and and then this probably hurts even more when it's your friend stealing from you, right? And not some random person that you just hired as a host. And it says, yeah, filthy fellas, um, Tego Siegel has been stealing money. That's why he's not around anymore. Poet found out and went mad. Fruit Punch L was right all along. It was just a modern day plantation over there. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. And then, of course, Tego made a statement listen watch listen to the statement i love these sort of statements right because he's typed a lot of words out but he's not actually said anything so this is the guy trying to explain himself after the rumors spread that he stole anywhere between seventy thousand to two hundred thousand pounds over the time that he worked there, and probably more to be fair if he was in charge of the books he probably stole way more but con continues he says as a statement there's a lot of misinformation flying around so i'm going to clear some things up weird numbers and names being said and repeated i never stole I didn't scam as a raw um, as people must feel right now. I was not the personal benefactory of management. I tried to my hardest to do what for everybody on that show. And my priority was making sure the show survived. I think he's saying I didn't steal or scam because he probably feels justified in the money that he took. Because there is a suggestion that he had the work. He had the funds coming in through the podcast going through his own personal account. That's what I've heard online. Weird to say, but allegedly they didn't have a business account. He's the one that dealt with the money and it went through his personal account. It's like, <laughs> I paid out over 500,000 for Filthy Talent in the last four years. I fought for everybody to earn, prioritized them all across my non-Filthy projects and never felt like I was doing enough. I always wanted Filthy to be self-sufficient operation but it was never anybody's first priority, so it was tough. When we first commercialized the channel, it had never had ads on it before. It was all in its sixth year, summer 2020, and was done for a reason that's not worth getting into. I split that money with Poet. It wasn't much in the scheme of things, not the figure being quoted. Poet contends that I should have paid it through my production company, and maybe he's right, but I really wanted Filthy to stand alone and was wrong for not communicating that in the moment. In January 2022, I switched the money to my production company as we had handled them and done merch drops and two live shows there and it was getting too much to handle. Filthy never came close to covering its bills for nine of its ten years and for one year it had to and we were and no and for one year it had to and we had a way which was with interviews. While we were attempting to solve the problems of production producing the show, we were also courting deals and racked in over or raked in over 110,000 in brand merch live deal splits, um, 10 ways for 10 guys in the show, and my temp would go towards the production cost. We met with big companies about management, corporate involvement, distribution, and were close to a deal that would have seen production costs taken out of my control and everybody in the show getting paid a healthy amount. While the deal was being negotiated the last five months, I committed to a big loss on production as we didn't have to waste player interviews on a platform that wasn't properly set up as it would have been our new situation. I was in the decision maker for everything for a long time. Whether it was by design or by choice, we'll debate it. 
but whether it was by name, the logo, the flags, the cups, the merch, the live shows, the lockdown streams. I wrote, produced all of the formats to suit the talent on the show. I believed I was making all the correct decisions and I believed I was making them for the cast of the show. The pressure was providing money. The pressure of providing money, opportunities, guidance and friendship to all the boys took its toll. I never felt like I was covering anything up and knowing the um, I was covering anything up and knowing the losses I was facing as a production company kept in filthy going. I was defiant against accusations of mismanagement. Arrogance, insecurity, ignorance, whatever it was, I believed that there was a light at the end of the tunnel and I was needed to keep the ship afloat and we'd all win. It's probably for the best that I crash and burn from my position as with all the best intentions, I'm not left with much. I wanted to protect and provide for my brothers and I failed. I never had malicious or selfishness in my heart at any time. I was always looking for solutions and one day I became the problem. This nigger stole. This nigger stole. This nigger stole, 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 stole. <laughs> 100% he stole. It's just wild, man, to steal from your friends. It's just wild to steal from your friends in this way. He probably got away with like you know taking a few bits in here and then got greedy over time and then of course it then all got exposed when that steve bartlett guy allegedly tried to negotiate a deal um and the thing about it as well you'd imagine even though it's not the other guy's faults i feel like most likely because of this situation it's probably going to look bad on the rest of the guys and the deals that they're doing most likely this might affect no negotiations it might just affect the numbers that they're going to be given or they're going to be quoted for some of the deals that they're taking place. So this all behavior, even though it's, you know, it's him doing it to himself, it's going to impact other people and it's going to hurt them as well. Because my number one thing that I think about, again, I don't watch Filthy Fellows. I've never really seen a four episodes. So I don't know that, that the dynamic and their chemistry, but looking at the pictures, there's like six different people on the show, sometimes eight, sometimes 10 throughout all the years a lot of people you're telling me the entire time this show was going on nobody had an inkling that this guy was you know stealing some of the funds from the bank account and shit it had to take like a third party an external person coming in and trying to invest until they found out and if he didn't invest they would have never known that he was stealing for what 10 years maybe maybe more that that is a bad look for these guys man that nobody knew he was stealing like god damn it bro there's a lot of money in podcasting but there's also opportunities to scam because a lot of these guys probably you know maybe if you especially if you don't have your channel you might not be used to or know what type of money certain things generate what you should expect maybe you don't have access to the adsense maybe you don't i mean maybe you just turn up and you're happy to get your fee and your salary maybe you don't want to get involved you just want to be the talent on air i don't know but it doesn't look the greatest on those guys but obviously the main person who should be feeling shame um and embarrassment is obviously the tigo seagull dude um you know he posted that statement he said a whole bunch of nothing really he tried to make himself sound like the victim or sound like the hero um you know selfless guy almost akin to jesus and shit and whatever it may be so clearly i think because of that he's definitely lying so he definitely stole something i don't know how much exactly he stole um but the fact that they cut him out of the show so soon or so quickly so decisively um means to me most likely he did that shit because if that's your friend you're going to give them the benefit of the doubt you're going to want him to explain them himself and you know rationalize it and make it make sense the fact that they, you know, cut him off so quickly and nobody from the team is backing him. I don't see a single person from the Filthy Fellas team have a positive thing to say. Everyone's basically sending indirects and shit or just refusing to talk about it. So it's probably clear that that guy probably did steal. Unfortunate, but not surprising. Not surprising. Not surprising.